Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and today we're gonna be talking about Cardano ADA and guys, ADA is literally going insane the last couple of weeks, specifically the last couple of days. It's been amazing. That's that's the easiest word I can give to it. A uh, may mother freaking zin. All right. It is going amazing. So the price, that's one thing. All right. You can clearly see how the price has been going amazing over the last couple of weeks. But the socials is a completely different level. The amount of interest that's all of a sudden into Cardano is, oh, I can't even, I can't even express it in words. That's, that's how crazy it is right now. And even though I don't really make as many Cardano videos as I used to do, I still notice the demand for ADA content is insane as well. So if you guys want more Cardano videos, make sure you press that like button and let me know in the comment section down below, do you hold Cardano? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's dive right in. So, wow, a Cardano launch is about to come up, right? What should we expect? Honestly, guys, I will always give you guys exactly what I think in the most honest fashion possible. So that means if I think it's going to go up, I'll tell you. If I think it's going to go down, I'll tell you. And what I think right now is that Cardano is on a war path towards the top. All right. Five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars easily for Cardano, even though it's already done times a hundred. And I literally bought the majority of my ADA at two or three cents. So even though our money is already times 100 at this point, it's still, it's still possible for, I'm going to say another, yeah, guys, I mean, times 10 is 20 bucks or so. It's, it's not, guys, honestly, it is not that difficult. It's not that crazy. Just want to quickly put that out there as my expectation kind of, but let's dive a little bit more into the specific for right now. So a smart contract feature is going to be launched in September, September 12th to be exact. Here's what it means. Well, there's actually a couple of events after one another. So September 1st is basically the transitioning start. September 12th is officially the launch day for Cardano smart contracts. And last week, Charles Hoskinson basically gave the date for this very much anticipated upgrade called Alonzo. And Cardano is a crypto that aims to use the blockchain tech to solve real world problems. For example, it has partnered with the Ethiopian government to track the educational progress of 5 million students on its network. The project will give each student a tamper proof academic record that could help them get jobs or study abroad. Smart contract functionality is a big step that will let Cardano compete with other programmable blockchains and will dramatically expand the potential solution it offers its partners. So as it currently stands, Cardano is actually a pretty interesting project. I know it's peer reviewed. It's a system which basically thinks things through properly first and then starts to build it instead of, you know, announcing something, start building it and then figure it out as long as you go. You know, you basically think something out and then start building it once it's really clear and basically reviewed by a lot of different parties that it's, you know, basically applicable and good. Um, it's also interesting, however, for the fact that, again, it was kind of an Ethereum competitor as the co-founder of Ethereum is also now the creator of Cardano. Um, but it actually took the entirely different approach towards it. So Ethereum, of course, is also a approach of let's do it first now, make money with it, and then see you later. Cardano is more of a, we have a plan. We're going to set this through. It's going to be amazing, but you'll have to wait a very long time before it's done. And that's kind of interesting because you don't have that many crypto projects which operate that way. Most of them operate in the way of let's build something so we can make money quick and we'll figure out the flaws. It's kind of EA logic, like, uh, you know, those game makers, because they make a game and then pre-release it basically or give it or out as soon as possible and then make upgrades as time goes on while also releasing some DLC or some other paid content. And uh, with Ethereum, it's kind of the same thing, right? They had the proof of work. It was okay. A lot of upgrades had to take place afterwards and a lot of uh, mishaps, a lot of questions came up afterwards, but they just decided to fix it as time moves on really, really slowly because, well, you got the majority of your money out already anyway. So expending it is nice, but you're already billionaire. So who cares, to be honest with you, right? That's that's, that's a big difference. Now, um, a couple of things to note right here. The smart contract functionality wasn't even there just quite yet, which basically means if it actually gets in there from right now forward, there's actually some huge potential for it, right? As Cardano right now got to the number, let's say, three-ish spot, not even having smart contract functionality. Like, so the, the whole project is mostly based upon an idea 
of, of the future. Now, even though they already have official government partnerships, that's a really small portion of the entire cake that they got. It's mostly about what they're building in the future, and people just believe in the story and the idea, which is also what I am kind of here for now. So why smart contracts are important, easy to say, right? I mean, obviously, DeFi, obviously, NFTs, obviously, anything else in that same layer, like, for example, gaming or even gambling for that matter. Uh, I would say it also kind of falls into just everything kind of falls into these brackets, right? Just everything you need smart contracts for is important for smart contracts. I mean, yeah. What do you, what do you need a contract for? Well, a smart contract also does that. And for every game and type of thing, you always need contracts in, in some degree. So it's it's kind of difficult to explain. Then again, it's also kind of simple. And now the Cardano Alonzo upgrade includes his own smart contract development language called Plutus. Cardano wants people who don't necessarily have technical backgrounds to be able to create smart contracts, which I also was talking about earlier a couple of days ago because, well, one of the really big stepping stones for making smart contracts is that you need a really good programmer for it uh, because there's actually a lot of breaches nowadays, a lot of hacks. And once more, Cardano is taking a really smart step for that too, but making it, it a lot more accessible for developers, right? So now Cardano has also gotten on a huge surge because of all the events and all the anticipation. Cardano's ADA surges to new high, becoming biggest crypto to hit record price after $1 trillion crash. Um, long story short, ADA just had a huge surge over the last couple of weeks, which a lot of people have felt is astronomic, specifically because it's a platform that's mostly based upon the future. So if you kind of look at it from that perspective, though, people anticipate good things for ADA, so the price is going up. Well, if the good things really happen, Maybe the price won't go up that much, which we'll cover later throughout this episode. Uh, but at least there will be another layer for which people can anticipate for the future for. Because right now people are waiting for smart contracts. And once the smart contracts are there, they're going to be waiting for something else. But at least there will be this whole entire layer of new developers, new activity, and new everything. So it will just be another, let's say, for example, a couple dollars higher before again anticipating the next big thing. Because Cardano is such a network where you wait a long while, but you get something really, really big. Um, then again, Cardano is still in the kind of early phases. I would even like to argue here that Cardano is actually not complete from even the beginning stage just quite yet, where almost every other crypto platform is uh, complete when they start and then kind of exp um, upgrade kind of later. Cardano is like, uh, we have something, we'll launch it, but we, we don't really have too much as we're going to kind of think about that and work through it. Uh, which is also why they didn't do well money-wise, I guess, from the start. Then again, in terms of marketing, in terms of interest, they did quite nicely. Charles Hoskinson in the past also said that Cardano has a good potential to be the first trillion-dollar crypto, and that he actually thought, again, I'm referencing to 2017-18, that um, to get another bull run like 2017, I think he said that in 2018, maybe 19, no, 2018, I think, it would take another 10 to 11 years because problems like um, what would happen to a uh, private key Right? What if a grandma dies and she loses a private key? What happens then? That needs to be fixed. I remember that stuff because I provide news every single day. You remember a lot of things that these big guys have said. Little fun story. All right, so that's all besides the point, right? Cardano search. What is about to happen in the near future? And what is going to happen at the 12th of September? Because that's the big event, the big day, the big launch. Well, guys, I want to kind of get back to that one with a quote here. And this quote is from the book, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. If you watch my XP videos, you know that I already kind of shared a hint towards this earlier today that I was going to talk about it because this is one of my all time favorite books. And for almost any situation in terms of investing, there is something which is handy. There's two parts. All right. Let's read part number one. The same people who were eager to buy stocks in the late 1990s when they were going up in price and therefore becoming expensive sold stocks as they went down in price and by definition became cheaper. As Graham shows so brilliantly in chapter 8, this is exactly backwards. The intelligent investor realizes that stocks become more risky, not less, as their price rise, and less risky, not more, as their prices fall. The intelligent investor dreads a bull market since it makes stocks more costly to buy, and conversely, so long as you keep enough cash on hand to meet your spending needs, you should welcome a bear market since it puts stock back on sale. That's one thing, for two reasons. One, I really wish we were again in a bear market so I could buy ADA at two or three cents again. Because now that we've tasted the three two dollar mark, it's really difficult for me to kind of cope with the idea that I could have just put in a thousand bucks and right now had a hundred thousand. Even though I had a lot of ADA at the at the time as well, it still would have been nicer if I if I bought more. You guys feeling me? It's like 
Now that I know it really has the potential to go this big, I just want more. And buying it at these levels is just difficult because I know the price has just been going insane over the last couple of weeks. And so buying right now, it just hurts, right? It just really kind of hurts. However, if there's another big dip, I definitely buy because once more, the lower the price is, the less risk you have. And so, I mean, if I were to buy right now, I'd buy at all time high. If I wait a little bit, for example, going back to, because my own expectation would be to kind of come back to about $2.23 or so. Uh, usually we retest old highs like that area. If we get back to that area, I might just buy. I guess another old high could be right here. Um, so I'm going to also put that one in just for the sake of making sure we have the the entire area kind of knocked off um, or written off, whatever. These two areas are areas of importance, about 2.31 and about 2.23 or so. Those are areas of important, and I might just set two buys. Because once more, we should take the, the dips, not the highest prices. And I tend to disagree with his viewpoint though which is basically you should embrace a bear market for long-term investing so for stocks i guess that's easier you should embrace a bull market for trading uh if you're you know just like most traders are just bullish traders you buy something and then you sell it off again you're not a short seller not that many people are to be honest with you some people it's short and long so they do both but most people they just do long or they do um, long with a very small amount of shorts. Like, I think that's most people. So what I was trying to say is that in a bullish market, it's a lot easier to just buy in, for example, right here and then sell it later or just hold it for a little bit through. In a bear market, it's basically like catching just lower lows. In a bull market, it is kind of catching higher points because as long as you know you're buying in a bull market, at one point or another, you'll be able to sell it for more. Um, and it doesn't really matter exactly what your average price was as long as you can make a little bit of money with that. Um, I noticed the recording stopped for a little second. I'm not exactly sure what happened right there. I think we're back at it. Hopefully, we didn't really miss too much. Uh, but now, point number two, which is really critical, is right here. All right, we don't need to read the the prior story to it. It's mostly about this part right here. All these so-called experts ignored Graham's sober words of warning. Quote. Obvious prospects for physical growth in a business do not translate into obvious profits for investors, end quote. While it seems easy to foresee which industry will go the fastest, that foresight has no real value if most other investors are already expecting the same thing. By the time everyone decides that a given industry is obviously the best one to invest in, the prices of its stocks have been bid up so high that its future returns have nowhere to go but down. For now at least, no one has the gall to try claiming that technology will still be the world's greatest growth industry. But make sure you remember this. The people who now claim that the next big sure thing will be healthcare or energy or real estate or gold are no more likely to be right in the end than the hypesters of high tech turned out to be. And that's kind of a reference to the story of before. But the point being, nobody really knows what the next big thing will be. Same thing for crypto. Nobody knows exactly what the next big hype will be. I mean, who predicted NFTs would take off this, this heavily? Who predicted that crypto would take off this big all of a sudden, right? And, and that's for the same next technology too. Same thing for specific cryptos as well. However, the first lines were more important, which basically talks about how, in theory, it's easy to be like, hmm, okay, there's a huge event coming up, so the price will go up, especially once it happens. But if everybody is anticipating the same event, so right now, for example, Cardano September 12 launch, well, then why would it go up? Because everybody who wants... To, to have the coin, and it was, it was bullish, basically. They've already bought it. So right now, we're going up mostly because of Bitcoin, or mostly because of the idea that so much is going to be built on top of Cardano from right now forward. But we all know the day itself is not that big a deal. It's from that point of forward that we're going to be building utility and build, going to be building kind of an ecosystem. The day itself, however, it's not really that big. And so from that perspective, September 12th and around that, I wouldn't trade it. Um, I wouldn't really touch it. Before that time, I'll still just buy, 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 buy. Every time I get the chance, every time we get another dip, because once more, we embrace the dip. We embrace it every single time, specifically in bullish markets like this. And that is still what we're in right now. So once more, I am buying, and I think I'll keep on buying all the way towards 20 bucks or so, as that's my minimum price for ADA short term. I'm not sure if it's going to be this cycle, but I would say this cycle, 10 bucks, $7, 7 to $10 is kind of simple. Uh, what math? None. Based upon th out of thin air. Why? Or well, just because I'm expecting that and kind of going to, I'm going to make a couple of moves if we get towards that area. That does not mean it's going to happen. That does not mean I'm a future force seeker, fortune teller, whatever. It just means I'm expecting those things because, well, 
I, I, I kind of just, you, you, everybody has an expectation of where prices will go towards, right? Same thing for Bitcoin. I personally think $200,000 for Bitcoin is not that difficult. And I do kind of follow the stock to flow model, which basically says $120,000 at the end of the year wouldn't be too crazy. Now, for right now, four, there will be times, you know, let's say times three or so. I wouldn't find that too crazy. I wouldn't time, find it too crazy if we go times three within this year still. Maybe it'll take a little bit longer. Who cares, right? But times three, it's pretty simple. And that already brings Bitcoin to about $150,000 almost. So from that perspective, too, ADA, it's significantly smaller. If it goes times five, 10, 10, 10 is 20 bucks. Yeah, it's not that hard. Ethereum as well, I think $20,000 is pretty simple. XRP, $10, $50 is pretty simple as well. $12 is a start for me for XRP. But yeah, that was it for right now. All right, so guys, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And let's hope that Charles Hoskinson was right about Cardano becoming a first trillion dollar crypto. I mean, first is not possible anymore, but maybe first trillion dollar altcoin. I guess maybe it's going to beat Ethereum, right? Who will, who will see? I guess we will all see. That was it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And see you guys again in another crypto video later today.